Here I have this example Next.js app brewer application where we can add UUIDs to a database by just clicking a button on both client components and over on the server components as well. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can set this up with the app brewer project so you can read and write data to a DynamoDB database using both client and server components. Let's get into it. So here we are inside the code repository. You can see we have our layout file set up here for the app uh, directory, but we're gonna expand on that in a moment when we add the pages. We also have a basic CDK project set up already inside our repository. So you can see here that we have a table construct called database table using a petition key of ID um, to remove the items once we destroy the database. And then we also have the on-demand billing setup. So that's already been set up and provisioned. And then inside our Next.js project, I also have this config file, which configures the credentials I've added to my EMV file here, and then the my DynamoDB clients that I need to read and write data from the database. So with all of that configured and already sorted, we're going to look at how we can add our utility functions, as well as add the components that we need to render this stuff out on the page so that we can read and write data to the database. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new utils directory in the root of the repository. This is going to contain our create and get all functions that we're going to need to read and write data to the database. So once we've created that directory, we're gonna create a new file inside of called db.ts just to contain the utility functions for our DB. And then we're gonna add in this code here. And let's just quickly go through this. So we can see we have the put command and our scan command being imported from the SDK. We have the random UUID coming in from crypto. That's what's gonna generate our UUID, which we display on the page, as well as the DB client that we just defined in this file here. We then define a TypeScript typed here, which I've covered in previous blog posts and shorts, but this allows us to apply a type to the data returned from the scan command. So we just use a generic here to assign it to the items property from the scan command. We then create two functions, our get all function and our create function. So inside our get all function, we perform the scan command and we return all of the data using the type we defined up here. So you can see here, we're returning an object of ID strings and an array of them. So the data we return from here is just an array of ID string inside an object. And then we return that data here with IDs.items. And then in the create function, it's a similar command, but we just use the put command just to create a new item in our database using the random UUID function that we import from crypto up here. So when we call this function, it will just create a new UUID and add that item to the database, which is how we saw them appearing on the page at the start. Now of our utility functions defined, we need to look at defining an API root or root handler as they're called in Next.js 13 to connect with our client component so that when we call the get all, we can run it on the server in the root handler and return that data to the client components. So we're not performing any database requests from the client itself. So to define that new root handler, we're going to create a new directory inside app called API. We're then gonna create one called ID inside that. And then we're gonna create the special root.ts file inside the ID folder. And then inside this root handler, we're gonna define two functions, a get function and a post function. And then inside the get function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the get all utility function that we just defined. And then we're gonna return that with the status code 200 to the requester. And then for the post request, we're gonna do a very similar thing. And we're just gonna call that create utility function that we just defined. And then we're just gonna return a status code of 204 because there's no actual content to be returned to the user. So now with our root handler defined and our DynamoDB utility function, defined and the config all set up, we're ready to actually start creating pages. So the first one we're going to create is the client page. So we're going to do that just by adding a new page.tsx into the project. So this will become our root page, our home page, but this will be the client version of this. And then inside this page, we're going to use this code here. You can see we use the use client directive right at the top to define this as a client side component slash page. We then import use SWR from SWR. We define our fetcher function to use with use SWR here. And then inside the page, we then use the use SWR that we import to perform our get request to the API ID route that we just defined over here. This will then return us the IDs that we returned from that root handler. And then on the page, we map over them down here to display them to the user, all of the IDs. And then alongside these IDs that we map out, we need to have a way to add them to the page. This button here, which does just that. Inside this button, we have an on-click handler, which does a post request to the root handler that we defined earlier to create a new UUID in the database. Then we call the mutate function from SWR to refresh the page and to show the new values that were just added to the database by performing another get request in SWR. So now we've finished the client side version of this. Now let's create the server side version of this. So to do that, we're going to create a new nested root inside the app directory called server. And then we're gonna create a new page.tsx inside of that. This will then be our server side page that we can access by going to slash server. So to start, we're just gonna set up the get request and the displaying of the IDs already in the database. We can do that with this code here. 
So you can see here, we define a new asynchronous page function. And then inside that we do our get all function directly. So because this is a server page and not a client page, remember we're not using that use client directive at the top. We are able to call these server side functions directly from the page. And we don't need to go via a root handle like we did with the page component. This is again, because it's all happening on the server. So no credentials or secret keys are being sent to the client. Once we've then got our data retrieved from the database from our get all function, we then just map over it here as we did on the client page just to show all of the IDs to the user. We're now at a point where we have the fetching of the data set up on our server side page. However, it's not quite as simple for the creating of the data or posting the new IDs to the database. This is because you can't have buttons with on-click handlers on server components because they can't have a level of interactivity to them. That's not possible with server components. So to get around that, we will have to create a new client component, which is the button which will have an on-click handler, which will then send a request to the root handler we did before. So in this case, the server component can directly call the get all function to retrieve the data, but we still need to use a client component to post that data via a root handler because we can't have that on click handler on a button in a server component, unfortunately. To get started on that, we're going to create a new component inside our server directory here, and it's just going to be called button.tsx. And then inside this file, we're going to do a very simple component definition that allows us to perform a post request to the root handler we defined earlier when we click on the button. So let's have a look at that component now. You can see here we use the use client directive again just to define that this is a client component to be rendered on the client and not on the server. You can then see that we define our button component, which we render here. And then very similar to the client component button that we defined in the client page, we do this post request to the slash API slash ID root handler. But unlike the client component that we defined on the client page, we can't call the mutate function from SWR. This is because we're running on a server page where there is no SWR calling the root handler. So there is no mutate for us to call. Instead, what we do is we do router.refresh, which will trigger a refresh of the page and then trigger the get all function on our server page to be rerun, fetching the new data from the database to render the new IDs, essentially performing the same function as what the mutate function did, but just on the server side this time. So now we've defined our new component here. Let's just add that to the page here in a similar place. So we can do a button like so, and then we'll just import that. And now we're at a point after adding our button component where we can actually demonstrate our app working. So let's now have a look at that over in the browser. So you can see we're back with our example application running, but this time we have no UIDs because we have a fresh database, so there's nothing stored currently. So let's push this button. And as you can see, every time we push it, we get that new ID being added to the database. And if we refresh, you can see that our data refreshes back on the page. You can see it is persisting in the database. Let's then head over to our server route that we defined. And you can see here again, we have the existing ones. And every time we push up, we get a new one added in. But this time when we refresh, we don't get the flash of content that we do on the client page because it's already being fetched and delivered to us from the server. So again, if we go to the server route, you can see here, we get that no flash of content, but when we push it, we get a new UUID added. And with that, it brings us to the end of this tutorial. In this video, we looked at how we can read and write data to a DynamoDB database from an XJS app for your project in both server and client components. I hope you found it helpful. And until next time, thanks for watching.